Hey, if you're looking to start a solar farm and you need a set of financial projections for a potential investor or lender, uh, then you've come to the right place because we have created a financial projection template spreadsheet here uh, built specifically for a solar farm. I'm going to walk you through how to fill it out and show you how to create a forecast for your particular solar farm. Uh, but before I dive too far into that, my name is Adam Huxima. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs create financial projections for all sorts of different businesses, industries, uh, for potential investors, lenders, and just for internal planning. Uh, and today we're specifically focused on this solar farm template that we built out. Uh, now I'm going to link to this template in the description of the video below, so you can go and grab that there. Also, uh, if you stick around to the end of the video, as a thank you, we'll give you access to a coupon code that you can use uh, to get a discount on this template as well. All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. I'll show you how it works. All right, so we're starting out on the at-a-glance tab, and this is kind of the end of the process. So after you have filled out all your assumptions, you're going to get some nice uh, charts and graphs here um, and some key, uh, key performance indicators for your solar farm. So you get your revenue, uh, your operating expenses, your net income, and EBITDA. And one thing you'll notice just right off the bat is that our net income is negative, and that is because primarily because we have a uh, an asset, the, the solar farm, that's going to be depreciated. And so that you'll see that there's a, a pretty substantial depreciation expense here. Um, that, uh, that is, is one of the key things that's driving a, a net loss. But our EBITDA, our earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization is positive um, in this example. And so I'll, I'll walk you through how we filled this out. Um, we also are going to get a five-year income statement summary, five-year cash flow summary, and a five-year balance sheet summary. And then the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet are broken down by month for each of the five years. All right, so those, that's kind of the deliverable. Um, there's a bit of work we're gonna to have to do in order to get there. So let's go back to our input assumptions tab here. And one thing to note is that every cell that's highlighted in light blue is an assumption that you can change. So let's say we've got a solar farm here. We're gonna invest, we're gonna have equity investment of 500,000. And it's gonna be a one megawatt solar farm. It's gonna cost a million dollars for the panels and equipment and installation. And then uh, the land, um, let's say we're gonna buy the land instead of lease it. Um, so land costs of 500,000 as well. And let's say we have a commercial loan for 1.25 million, um, uh, amortized over 30 years at 6.5%. All right, now let's jump to the input revenue tab here. So we've got our one megawatt solar farm. We could, you could actually put in multiple units. So if you had, you know, you wanted to do different unit types, so if you had one megawatt solar farm, but you're actually installing three of them, you know, maybe all at the same time, you could put three and it would just multiply everything by three. Um, the other option would be you could put in, you know, a uh, two megawatt solar farm here and put in assumptions for a second one. You'll be able to put in what is the first month in the projections uh, where revenue has started to be generated from this solar farm. So for the first one, we're saying uh, basically the projections are starting when the solar farm is uh, put into, in, into operation. So it starts generating revenue right in month one, and it takes three months to reach its full capacity. But you could, if you wanted to layer in, adding a second, a third, you know, additional solar farms each year or every month. You can do that simply by putting the, you know, the first month um, would be, could be month 13, right, to bring on the next unit. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to show you here is what you'll want to do is um, come up with assumptions for how many megawatt hours will be produced at the farm um, per year. Now, I did a little bit of research. I'm not a, uh, I don't own a solar farm. I'm not a solar farm expert. I'm a financial modeling and projection expert. So we did some research and tried to figure out, you know, on average, uh, how many megawatt hours might a one megawatt solar farm produce per year. Um, and we found a number, um, 2,146 megawatt hours. And then um, again, it's gonna vary dramatically uh, how much you can sell that electricity um, for per kilowatt hour. Uh, so I've got eight cents right here in this example. Um, and I think from my research, it could be probably dramatically higher or maybe lower, um, really depending on where you're at in, in the world, right? Um, and so you'll need to you know, do your own research on that. Uh, but then once, once we um, have those assumptions in there, we'll be able to calculate our monthly revenue, which is uh, just the 2,146 megawatt hours produced per year divided by 12 to come up with a monthly number um, times the eight cents per kilowatt hour times a thousand because there are 1000 kilowatt hours in a megawatt hour, right? So that will give us our monthly revenue of 14,307. Now we can add in annual price increase assumptions and then built in downtime. So if you expect the, the farm to be down 
um, for repairs and maintenance, perhaps, or um, you know, for whatever reason, we we have built in the ability to have some percentage downtime. All right, so now we want to go to our input other expenses tab, and we can see some operating expenses that we have entered in here. So I've got a repair and maintenance line item, and what you can do here is you can select from this dropdown um, whether the expense should be a fixed dollar amount or a percentage of revenue. So I've got this set up as a percentage of total revenue, and assuming we'll spend 10% of total revenue on repairs and maintenance. Um, I'm just keeping the farm in good operating condition. $500 a month on accounting, $500 a month on some software and subscriptions, have an other expense category, uh, just kind of a miscellaneous at 3% of revenue. Insurance, professional services, where you might need um, just solar farm, uh, you know, experts or maybe you need legal services or um, other professional services. At least. So we have a budget line item for that. Property taxes, this is gonna vary depending on your situation, your location, all sorts of things, but um, I just made that as a percentage of revenue as well. And then groundskeeping, uh, $500 per month. Again, could vary dramatically depending on your location and situation. And then we have a salaries tab. Now for a single one megawatt solar farm, you're probably not going to need some you know, full-time employee or something because once it's installed, um, the main thing will be repairs and maintenance. There doesn't need to be an employee there sitting and watching it, right? Um, <clears throat> so you might need this tab if you're, if you're building out multiple solar farms, right? Then you might need uh, part-time property manager or maybe full-time depending on your scale. Uh, maybe you employ maintenance staff so you could actually employ uh, maintenance staff instead of using this uh, repairs and maintenance line item uh, as a 10 percent of revenue. Uh, maybe you, you use that here. Okay. Um, all right so that brings us back to our at a glance tab and um, you'll again be able to see whether you're profitable and whether you have EBITDA or not. Now I would expect you're probably going to have a net loss um, would be my expectation because you're going to have a large depreciation expense. So we look at the income summary, we look at depreciation, uh, you know, $33,000 a year. Uh, so without that, if you back out that depreciation expense, you'd have a, you'd have a net income uh, alone just on that. The main thing you want to do is take a look at the cash flow statement and look at this cash at beginning and period uh, row here at the, at the top of each year. And just make sure this cash at the beginning of the period never drops below zero. Um, so you might be able to operate with a net loss forever um, because you'd still be you might still be cash flow positive. So keep that in mind. All right, um, I think that's it. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. And uh, like I mentioned, as a thank you for for watching the video to the end, um, in the description of the video below, there'll be a link to this template. There'll also be a link to a form that you can fill out to get a coupon code. So fill out that form, grab the coupon code, and use that at checkout as our thank you for watching the video to the end. And uh, and, and grab that discount. So um, again, have any questions, leave a comment uh, in the comment section below or reach out to us directly at support at projectionhub.com. Thanks.